But these are microfabricated devices that we use to grow human cells, but microengineering techniques that we use to make these devices also allow us to mimic the complex structure and dynamic environment of the human body in ways that have not been possible using traditional in vitro and cell culture techniques. The idea that we have is to use these systems as microengineered models of human organs for biomedical research. And we could actually use these model systems to test things that are not testable on humans. Organoids actually grow much like the real organs in our bodies and they develop into miniature organs that are small enough to fit into a petri dish. And unlike organ on a chip, which are heavily engineered man-made systems, organoids allow us to mimic the complexity of the human body in a more natural way. So organoids represent a more realistic model, but they have uh, problems because they develop in a highly variable fashion and it's not very easy to control their environment. So we think that organ on a chip technology is a promising solution to many of these problems. Uh, we can use these devices to control the cells in their microenvironment very precisely, and we have tight control over inputs and outputs of these systems. Three, two, one, zero. And so for example, we recently launched some of our organ on a chip devices to the International Space Station in a self-contained cube lab to study how and why astronauts become more prone to infection during space flight. So we can also incorporate mechanical actuators into organ chip devices to develop more advanced in vitro models. For example, we've recently developed a blinking eye on a chip that replicates the movement of blinking eyelids. So what's compelling is to combine the physiological realism of organoids with controllability and reproducibility of organ on a chip technology to develop a more advanced system that would give us the best of both worlds.